welcome to the Daily Obsession. Today I decided I'm going to do a bit of a real crime episode. Obviously there's a bunch of true crime podcasts out there, but I decided I wanted to go with one that had no murder in it, because that's kind of dark, and I honestly prefer art theft, because I feel that there's a certain sense of uh, panache and showmanship that it requires to be an art thief as opposed to a serial killer or a murderer. So the art theft I decided I wanted to cover is one of the biggest in all of history and honestly it wasn't that long ago. It only took place in the 1990s. This is obviously the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum theft from March 18th, 1990. Uh, the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum is in Boston, Massachusetts at 25 Evans Way. It is a beautiful museum named after Isabella Stewart Gardner, who was an American art collector who lived in the 18-1900s. And it's a beautiful museum. It has a lot of pieces, and a lot of them are worth a lot of money. But this is the single largest property theft in the world. It consisted of eight, uh, 13 art pieces, mostly paintings, but including some sculptures as well. And, well, here's the story. So it was early morning on March 18th, and a vehicle pulled up to the side entrance of the museum. Two suspects in police uniform pushed the museum buzzer and stated to the two security officers that there was a disturbance in the museum and they needed to go in and check it out. The guard on duty, who was a fool, broke protocol and allowed them in through the employee entrance. And the two fake cops immediately took him and the other security guard and handcuffed them and tied them up in the basement, which left them basically free to move about the museum and take whatever they wanted. They took 13 of the gardener's works 81 minutes later. So there were motion detectors in the museum, and this was the early 1990s, so it's not, you know, the best security in the world, but the best known works of art that they had were taken from their Dutch room. I never really got that. Why do they name so many museum rooms after just nationalities? You'll have like the Roman room, the Dutch room. I assume it has something to do with the artists whose pieces are featured there. But when I went to the National Gallery, there were several rooms that featured cross nationality painters. So if you know the answers, let me know. But um, anyway, so the Dutch room was where most of the best-known works they had were taken from. They had a Rembrandt known as Christ in the Storm on the Sea of Galilee, adapted from the famous Bible story. There was a lady and gentleman in black, both of which were cut from their frames, which I gotta imagine isn't the best way to steal a piece of art. I feel like it would be hard to resell something that you damaged. But either way, they had a Vermeer known as the Concert, Flink's landscape with an obelisk, which were both uh, removed from their frames a bit more carefully, so better for the resale value. They had an ancient Chinese bronze goo, or beaker, which they stole from a pedestal, and they had a self-portrait etching by Rembrandt that was on the side of a chest. I assume it's some sort of a box because a lot of artists would put idols and such, not idols, um, icons, that's the term, in boxes. So there were, I believe, seven motion alarms that were triggered the night of the theft. Um, what, there were two at 154 and five at 155. They were all from the Dutch room and from paintings that they stole. And it, I mean, yeah, it was a very, very big theft from the Dutch room because those were where 
the more important paintings were uh, stored. So they had a short gallery, which was on the same floor as the Dutch room. And from there, several Degas drawings and a finial of a bronze eagle was stolen. There was a Monet stolen from a room that was the blue room. And so all in all, there was a ton of painting stolen, all of which amounted to a ton of money, somewhere around 100 million, I believe. Anyways, the two cop fake cops departed at early morning, 2.45 a.m.-ish, and they made two separate trips to their car with the artwork. The guards remained handcuffed, and the police arrived at about 8.15 a.m. to investigate the, the motion alarms that went off. And the 13 stolen artworks are quite beautiful, actually. They're all very different. There's not many that look very similar, but it seems interesting that they didn't go for many from the same area. I mean, obviously several were stolen from the same room, but I feel like it would make more sense. Maybe it's just a bit of OCD talking, but I'd, wanted, I'd want to steal paintings only from one certain area of art history, such as the Renaissance or Impressionism, but um, these 13 pieces that were stolen still remain missing to this day more than 25 years later. So the, the museum is offering a $10 million reward um, with the FBI and U.S. Attorney's Office to information leading directly to the recovery of all 13 works of art in good condition. Without, they did cut them out of the frames, so I gotta imagine that it doesn't matter whether it's in good condition because the thieves ruined that for us. Um, so it kind of is interesting to me because several things stand out to me about this case. It almost seems too simple I mean, obviously, that's probably just my large amount of crime movies and TV shows I've seen speaking, but I feel like an art museum that has that much money in its paintings would have more security guards than just two and would have more alarms, I'd say, than just motion alarms. Now, I don't know if these motion alarms caused like an actual alarm with noise to go off like wow, wow, wow. but this may sound crazy but i kind of think it was an inside job i feel like a lot of museums have all this art and they have a lot of insurance on it now imagine for a moment that the museum it's not a famous museum i mean there's plenty of museums that you can know around the U.S. just from, you know, existing. You've got the National Gallery, you've got the MoMA, you've got the, uh, the uh, Conclaves, I believe, is the other part of that. But no one's really heard of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, despite the fact that they have several pieces that are worth millions of dollars, which means it's probably very expensive to keep open if it's not that famous. So what if they were looking to have a bit of a bump in fame, a bit of a bump in a little bit of money through the insurance, so they staged a robbery? They purposely put less guards on than they usually would. They, either people who already worked there or people they hired, were hired to pull up and broke in, maybe the system was turned down a little bit so that they could move in and out easily. Maybe they loosened restrictions so that the frames were not as attached to the wall or the paintings weren't as guarded. I don't know, I'm just saying that it seems logical to me that for a museum that may not be doing as well, maybe, just maybe, to get a little bit of fame, they stage a robbery of 13 pieces, none of which are the most famous pieces in the world. I mean, nobody's saying, well, I just want to go 
to the Isabella Gardner Museum because they have Edouard Monet's Chez Tarty, which, let's face it, unless you're having something like the Mona Lisa or Starry Night, which is the most famous of the famous paintings, it doesn't really matter if it's there or not because people aren't going to be going there specifically for those pieces. So they steal the pieces that are worth the most but not as knowledgeable to the general public, stuff that is just general drawings and stuff that due to history have become more valuable. And then they tell the police, the police make a big deal about it, they put out a huge reward, and due to the fact that the only people who know where they are are the museum owners themselves, who are the ones who stole them, they end up with a lot of fame, and a lot of new visitors, a lot of money, maybe from the insurance or the new visitors. I don't know. All I'm saying is that it seems that thieves making off with one of the greatest art thefts in history, as several websites and podcasts put it, would just disappear like that. You'd think that some of them might be sold on the black market, that somebody would have seen something. I mean, Boston is not a small city. It's hard to move around there without being seen by somebody. You got to imagine somebody in the area happened to see somebody walking outside of this giant museum in the middle of the night. But that's just my opinion. I obviously am not a detective of any sort, but it just seems logical to me because if you look at all these other art thefts that happen, it's either somebody who stole one painting and didn't try to sell it and just wanted the painting, such as the Mona Lisa thefts or the screen thefts, which happened on several occasions, but it was just somebody stealing them just so they could own them. It seems more likely to me that 13 pieces being stolen and being unable to be found even 25 years later, despite the huge amount of money, means to me that the museum may not want them found. For some reason, and I believe that reason, is that they're the ones who had them stolen in the first place. Thank you for listening. This has been The Daily Obsession.